Undead warrior. You may kill. And I may harm you. Power of the sun. So when I heard about Backlog's new one-shot challenge, I was a little up in the air. I'd already done the world's first Dark Souls one-shot challenge run years ago, but then when I started to see the other runners putting up their videos utilizing a lot of my strategies from that video, obviously that triggered enough nostalgia to where here we are. I've done some pretty cool stuff since then, like the world's first Elden Ring one-shot challenge a couple weeks after that game came out. Then of course I had to go back and redo the Elden Ring one-shot challenge without leveling to be the first to do that. And as cool as all the Elden Ring stuff was, for me, it just didn't even compare to Dark Souls. Those strategies for some of those world first one shots on like Quelag or Manus or Hydra or Four Kings, some of those took me months to come up with and execute. For a decade of the Fujita one shot challenge, people said that Manus couldn't be one shot. So here we are running it back, chasing that feeling of what it felt like to one shot him for the first time. So for those unfamiliar with the rules in a Dark Souls one shot challenge, the first and most important rules, obviously, you have to one shot everything. This is defined as one attack or one button press for every enemy. So that means a single R1 or R2 for melee and a single button press for any sorceries or pyromancies as well. Now normally you get to level up one time for everything you one shot, but in my run I will not be leveling. I'm going to be staying soul level 1 for the entirety of the run. Since the only class that starts at level 1 is pyromancer, we're locked into that class and we're going to start off with the master key as our starting gift. If you guys enjoy the run, do us a huge solid and smash the like button, and if you want to see more, then feel free to subscribe. So as with all Dark Souls one-shot challenge runs, the challenge starts at Firelink Shrine. We're going to make our way through the Undead Bird to the Male Undead Merchant, and we're going to purchase two Reinforced Clubs, as this is the strongest weapon in Dark Souls that you can use at level 1. Now that we have our main weapon, we're going to go and we're going to cheese the Crestfallen Warrior and make him fall off the cliff. Now this is optional as an easy thousand souls early on, but you can come back and one shot him at any point, he doesn't have a lot of health. We're going to use our master key to head to the Valley of the Drakes and pick up the red tearstone ring. We're going to use the red tearstone ring to increase our damage by 50% while our health is below 20%. Then we're going to take the elevator up and out the back side of the Valley of the Drakes to the Dark Root Basin where we're going to run past the Hydra. This gives us early access to the Hornet ring, which we can use to increase our critical damage by 30%, and we'll be using this a lot with riposts and backstabs. And while we're back here, we're going to do one run of the forest NPC cheese strategy to stack up some early runes. And this just saves us time in terms of farming runes and upgrade materials for our reinforced clubs. On my way to the blacksmith, I got lucky and got two large titanite shards, which we'll need shortly. I bought some titanite shards and upgraded my reinforced clubs to plus five. On the way back to Firelink, we're going to grab the Undead Asylum F2 West key. Now when working your way down through the catacombs to the blacksmith, it's very important that you stop and grab the green titanite shard. This one single green titanite shard is all you need to have the blacksmith modify your reinforced club plus 5 to a fire reinforced club. Doing so will nearly double the damage of that weapon. Now you can homeward bone back to Firelink Shrine and take a ride back to the Undead Asylum. Our first mini boss is a black knight with 745 HP, and the only buffs we need are the red tear stone and hornet rings. Our first NPC is going to be a hollowed version of Oscar, Knight of Astora. And for this fight, again, all we need is the red tearstone and hornet rings. So after picking up the crest shield, we're going to head upstairs and around to the lock gate and use the Undead Asylum F2 West key. This is going to give us access to the Rusted Iron Ring, which will make navigating Blighttown much easier as it gives you full movement speed in water swamps and tar pits. Our second mini boss is going to be another Black Knight who has 745 HP, and the strategy here is exactly the same. Now 
Now, before leaving the Undead Asylum, you want to pick up the Peculiar Doll. This will save us a trip back here later when we want to access the Painted World. Then you're free to go back to Firelink Shrine and use the Valley of Drake's shortcut to access Blighttown. Time your roll under the Parasitic Wallhugger to get Power Within, then make a smooth escape without getting one shot and pretend like you weren't stressed at all. Now Power Within is awesome because it buffs our damage by 40%, but at the cost of 1% HP per second for 100 seconds. Now we're going to put good use to that Rusted Iron Ring to farm green and large Titanite shards from the slugs. We need a total of 9 green and 9 large Titanite shards. Then with our Weapon Smith Box, we can upgrade our Fire Reinforced Club to plus 5. Then we can go and farm the last couple large Titanite shards that we're going to need later. Now before leaving the Great Hollow, be sure to save scum a couple of these Crystal Lizards in order to get a Titanite Slab. Or you could just be extremely lucky like I was here and get 2 slabs out of 3 lizards. More on those slabs later. For now, let's look at our first NPC Red Phantom Invader, Maneater Mildred. She's actually pretty simple after upgrading the Fire Reinforced Club and adding Power Within. Also, before you leave, don't forget to grab this large Titanite shard. Now we're going to head back to the Undead Berg and do the Undead Berg skip to get access to the Capra Demon. All you have to do is time the jump off those stairs at that specific angle and then walk off the ledge and you should be in the lower Undead Berg. Be sure to have the Residence Key first though so that while you're down here you can free Griggs and move him to Firelink. Now our very first boss is the Capra Demon with 1176 HP. We're just going to plunge attack for a free 200% damage multiplier. Then we're going to use the key to the depths. We're going to head down and we're going to kill the first of the two butcher mini bosses. And you could easily just parry or backstab, but I really enjoy doing this flying squirrel attack. Now for the second butcher, we're just going to do a pretty standard parry and repose. Before leaving, we need to be sure that we free Laurentius, at which point he'll move to Firelink. And then the main reason that we came down here at this point and killed Capra this early was for the Large Ember. The Large Ember will let us take our plus 5 standard reinforced club all the way up to plus 10. Now before Homeward Boning, you might as well take care of the giant rat mini boss. This is one of the few bosses in the game with the special 400% damage plunge critical attack. At this point, we're going to head back to the Undead Berg and kill the Black Knight there, which should be pretty easy with the Red Tearstone and Hornet Ring and Power Within. Now, out of convenience, on the way to our next boss, we're going to stop and kill Hava the Rock, who has just over 1000 HP. Then head upstairs and kill the crystal lizard hiding in the barrel and hope you get as lucky as I did with two titanite chunks. Now it's time for our second boss and another one of those very few that have the 400% plunge damage critical attack. This was the easiest one shot of the run. Then we'll cross the bridge and parry the undead parish black knight with the hornet ring and our main two buffs that I'll refer to from here out as hyper mode. While we're here, we're going to do the last of our 400% damage plunge critical attacks, which is sort of overkill for the 300 HP on the Armored Tusk. While the Baronic Knight is not technically a mini boss, I one shot him anyways as he's a non respawning enemy. Uh... 
And the same thing applies for this channeler. He's non-responding, though he's not a mini boss, so I one-shot him anyways. Then I free Lawtrek and I'll deal with him soon enough. Our third boss is the Bell Gargoyles. With the first Gargoyle, we actually need Hyper Mode and Instability Damage, so we need to connect as he's starting a movement. With the Gargoyles down, we get to ring the first bell and finally make some progress into the story. Then we go back to Firelink and take the elevator down to the new Londo ruins. We're gonna snatch the rear ring of sacrifice for later. And then unfortunately, we're gonna have to kill Ingward. We really need the key to the seal from him early so we can lower the water and start to farm Titanite chunks. Unfortunately, killing Ingward is the only way to get the key to the seal this early. The only other way to get it is if he gives it to you after you get the Lord Vessel, which is much, much later in the game. After lowering the water, we're gonna jump down and grab the two Titanite chunks in the chest below. And most importantly, we're gonna grab the very large ember. With both the Large Ember and Very Large Ember, we can now take our Reinforced Club all the way to plus 15 with Andrea Vistora in the Undead Parish. Now you just need to farm the Dark Wraiths down here until you have a total of 7 Titanite Chunks. Just Homeward Bone to Fire Link and repeat this farm as needed. Now just return to Andrea in the Undead Parish and give him the Large Ember, at which point he'll modify your Reinforced Club from plus 5 to plus 6 and allow you to upgrade it all the way to plus 10. Then you can give Andre the Very Large Ember, at which point he will modify a weapon from plus 10 to plus 11 and allow you to reinforce all the way to plus 15. Since you grabbed a slab in the Great Hollow, you now have a completely maxed out plus 15 reinforced club. Now I get to show you the really cool dragon scale farming technique that I came up with years ago during my first level 1 one shot challenge. If you R2 a drake with your plus 15 reinforced club and then R2 it a second time, it'll stagger it. And that gives you a window to safely get your third R2 in for the kill. So basically, after coming down the elevator, you do the two drakes to the left, cross the bridge, and then you run straight past these three and up the ladder. If you heal just before aggroing these three, when you get to the top and plunge attack, you'll have just enough health to activate red tearstone ring when you land. This will kill all three drakes in one hit, then you could just homeward bone and repeat the farm as much as you need. After farming 80 dragon scales, you'll have plenty of souls to upgrade your pyromancy flame to plus 15. We also want to purchase the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring, which will increase sorcery and pyromancy damage by 20%. And feel free to grab the Lingering Dragon Crest Ring as well. It extends the duration of sorceries and pyromancies by 50%, and this includes Power Within. Now, as we pass through the Great Hollow on the way to the Path of the Dragon Covenant, be sure to pick up Titanite Chunks and Red Titanite Chunks along the way. Then it's time to join the best covenant in Dark Souls for a one-shot challenge, the Path of the Dragon. For those of you that are unaware, you can rank up in the Path of the Dragon Covenant by turning in those dragon scales that we farmed. Now what we're after here is the Dragon Torso Stone that you get at rank 2, but we need to go to rank 3 to get the highest damage buff from the Dragon Torso Stone, at which point the Dragon Roar will give us 30% increased AR for 5 seconds. Now 7 years ago I came up with the coolest way to one-shot Quaylog at soul level 1. We combine Hyper Mode with Dragon Roar, Gold Pine Resin, and that 200% damage plunge attack. This is nowhere near as easy as it looks, and it took me weeks to come up with this. I almost made the mistake of ringing the second bell without running back to kill Lawtrick, and that would have left me without the Firelink Bonfire for most of the time. Now it's time to visit Quilana and buy all of the Pyromancy spells that she has. We want to purchase all of them because we won't have another chance later on. We also want to ascend our Pyromancy Flame with her and take it to the max of plus 5. Now we unfortunately have to kill her. The reason we needed to kill her is because she drops Fire Tempest, which is the strongest Pyromancy in Dark Souls. I'll explain in more detail later, but for now you're going to go and ring the second bell. This will finally give us access to Sen's Fortress. But before going there, you want to head back down and farm 8 more Titanite Chunks. We'll be using them to create a Lightning Reinforced Club in a little bit, but it's easier to have them ahead of time when you go to Inner Londo. Also, to save yourself quite a bit of time and running later on, you want to stop and purchase 2 more Reinforced Clubs. At this point, you're ready to start making your way through Sen's Fortress. While you're here, be sure to progress Onion Bros quest line so you don't miss out on a mini boss later on. 
I recommend spamming some Lloyd's Talismans for a symbol of avarice at this point. This lowers your HP by 5 per second, it's a convenient way to get into hyper mode. And you should pick up the covetous gold serpent ring while you're here as well. This ring raises item discovery by 200 and paired with your humanity will let you reach the cap for easy farming. Our next mini boss is Prince Rickard, and this is just a simple R2 attack with hyper mode and a dragon roar. Go to the Crestfallen Merchant and purchase enough large titanite shards to give you 18 total, and then head downstairs and grab the cage key. From here I went to the roof and one shot the firebomb giant. This is a non-respawning enemy with 1726 HP. Be sure to pick up the titanite chunk that he drops. Then head downstairs and use the cage key to take the shortcut back to Andre in the Undead Parish. Upgrade one of the reinforced clubs all the way to plus 10. Now it's time to take out our fifth boss, the Iron Golem. We'll use Hyper Mode and Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring with our maxed out Pyromancy Flame to burn through that 2880 HP. When you get to Inner Londo, I recommend using some pyromancies to get through here at level 1 a little bit easier. And don't forget about the most convenient skip in Inner Londo while you're here. At this point, the giant blacksmith will modify that plus 10 reinforced club we just made into a lightning reinforced club. Then we're going to use our extra titanite slab and all those titanite chunks that we went back and farmed from the dark wraiths to take the lightning club all the way to plus 5, which is the max. <laughs> From here I went back to tie up some loose ends, the first being the Prowling Demon in the Undead Parish. All we need here is Hyper Mode, Dragon Roar, and just a regular R2. Then I head down to the Darkroot Basin to take care of the Black Knight there with just a simple parry. And the damage here ended up being way overkill. Now this world first one shot on the darker basin hydra at level 1 was also pretty insane. This took weeks to come up with as well but again was totally worth it. The Duskcrown ring is actually very convenient to lower your health to reach hyper mode faster. We can make pretty short work of the Golden Crystal Golem to rescue Dusk. All we needed here was Hyper Mode, Dragon Roar, and a simple R2. It's very important to go back and pick up the Crown of Dusk before leaving. We can use this to further increase the damage of our Sorceries, Miracles, and Pyromancies by 20%. Now at this point we can head back to Anorlando and start progressing again. We can one-shot the two gargoyles on the bridge with just hyper mode, dragon roar, and a simple R2. Now the Prowling Demon in Anorlando has much higher HP at 2635, so we're going to need to use Fire Tempest on this one. A pro strategy was to forget to pick up the Dark Moon Seance Ring when you were in the Catacombs earlier. That way you need to run all the way back from Anorlando to get that one extra attunement slot that we need for ONS. So after getting all the way back to Anorlando you want to equip the Dark Moon Seance Ring and make sure that you have Power Within in your last slot. This way when you swap out the Dark Moon Seance Ring for the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring after casting Power Within, it'll remove Power Within which doesn't matter because it's already in use and you get to keep the Great Fireball and Fire Tempest that you actually need for the fight. Speaking of which, the strategy for this fight is going to be a Great Fireball for Ornstein and then Fire Tempest for Super Small.
Now we've reached probably everybody's favorite part of Dark Souls where you obtain the Lord Vessel and you can finally warp between bonfires. Heading into the entrance of the Duke's Archives, we could take out the Armor Tusk mini-boss pretty simply with a great fireball. And then we're just going to use the same exact strategy for the second Armored Tusk mini-boss and just use a great fireball. We're just going to use a simple R2 attack to kill the blue crystal golem for the broken pendant. With the broken pendant, we now have access to the DLC. Our first DLC boss is going to be the Sanctuary Guardian. If you can find a window to get it off, Fire Tempest makes this fight pretty quick. Our next boss, Knight Artorius, is actually my favorite character in Dark Souls. We're going to use Fire Tempest again while ducking under his attack. We're going to immediately trade the soul of Artorias for the gold tracer. We don't need this now, but we're going to need this for something very specific later in the run. It only seemed fitting for Sif to be the next boss on the list. And with Fire Tempest, this is one of the easier fights. All you need to do is roll underneath him and get a cast off. With the Covenant of Artorias, we could take on the Four Kings when we're ready. But before leaving the Darkroot Garden, we want to go take care of the Moonlight Butterfly. This is just another simple R2, it's just more so annoying to try to get him to finally land. Be sure to grab the Divine Ember, which allows Andre to upgrade a plus 5 weapon into a Divine Weapon. At this point, you can head straight back to Andre and give him the Divine Ember. Upgrade your Spare Reinforce Club to plus 5 and then ascend it to a Divine Reinforce Club. Then use your extra green Titanite Shards to upgrade it all the way to plus 5. Now when you kill skeletons in the Catacombs and Tombs of the Giants, they will stay dead. So the Gold Tracer's R2 attack actually hits 3 times with 1 attack. If you can manage the timing, you can move swap that onto the Reinforce Club. We can use this to actually one-shot Ceaseless Discharge at level 1. But don't worry, I'm also going to show you the glitchless way that I killed this boss next. So how do you one-shot Ceaseless Discharge with one attack at level 1 with no glitches? Well the simple answer is gravity. All you need to do is use this spot to jump up on top of him and bounce 6 times. The damage here does not matter, as long as he takes 6 ticks of damage he will fall to his death. Now when you make your way down, there's 7 Taurus demons down here, they're not mini bosses, they're just non-respawning enemies. Here I made good use of the lingering dragon crest ring to make my power within last a lot longer, and then I just one shot all of them with a dragon roar and an R2.
this capper demon respawns, I just one-shot him for the fun of it. So Red Phantom Knight Kirk here only has 719 HP. The easiest way to one-shot him here without getting hit by his thorns is to just hit him with a great fireball. And then a great fireball is an easy way to take care of this non-respawning burrowing rockworm as well. With 5,448 HP, the Demon Fire Sage is a tank of a boss. As counterintuitive as it is, Fire Tempest is actually our best bet here. Centipede Demon is an optional boss, as you can skip this by opening up the Lost Isolus shortcut. I thought it'd be cool to show you guys how I did it at level 1 though with the move swap. We can actually take out both the Daughter of Chaos and Kirk at the same time. Just a basic R2 work since they both have such low health. Now while we're down here, we want to farm a couple Red Titanite chunks and grab the Red Titanite slab so that we can create a Chaos weapon later. You can make your life a lot easier by using Pyromancy here, I recommend Great Fireball. And if you run out of Pyromancy and you have to drop down to finish any remaining enemies, just be sure to switch to your Rusted Iron Ring. That way you can run around at full speed and dodge while you fight, these enemies are pretty slow, they're not that dangerous. Also be sure not to miss the Red Titanite chunks that are just ground loot down here, and be sure to hit the chest in the back for the Red Titanite slab. Make your way upstairs and kill the last enemy and hopefully he drops you a red titanite chunk like he did for me here. And don't forget the final red titanite chunk is ground loot right next to him. Now heading back into Duke's archives, we're going to kill the crystal knight with a simple parry. He only has 742 HP so this is nothing crazy. Be ready to kill the crystal lizard on the way up the stairs and see what you get. And now's the point where we're finally going to use a rare ring of sacrifice to make sure that we don't lose our souls, as there's no way to avoid death the first time we meet Seath. So we're going to make our way through Duke's archives and grab the archive tower giant door key. We're going to one shot a channeler and then we're going to realize that we forgot to do Onion Bro's quest line back in Anor Londo. So we'll help him deal with these Silver Knights. You defeated those monsters? We'll speak to him in Firelink Shrine to progress his quest line down to Blighttown. At which point we'll meet him in Blighttown and give him a couple of purple moss clumps. And at this point the Golden Crystal Golem mini boss will show up in Duke's archives which actually has his daughter imprisoned and all we need to do is use a great fireball here. And if we keep heading down towards Seath there's another Golden Crystal Golem mini boss that we can kill with the great fireball again. And then we can use a great fireball on the third and final golden crystal golem mini boss as well. Then we get the cutscene where we get to see Seath come crashing in here like he just polished off a handle of tequila by himself. I guess it's impressive that he can fly at all with those tiny little dragonfly wings. So anyways, even though Seath has a lot of HP, it's a pretty easy fight. Because of his size, he's going to get hit with so many Fire Tempest pillars. Now 
Now heading back into the catacombs is going to be a lot less stressful with the divine reinforced club since now skeletons will stay dead permanently. We're going to make a pit stop halfway down and kill the prowling demon with fire tempest. This one's really simple as he doesn't even aggro. Up next is the Catacombs Black Knight, who has pretty low HP and we're just going to parry as usual. Our next boss Pinwheel is actually very simple, he's only got 1326 HP, so we can actually just run right up to him and hit him with an R2. So now with the Rite of Kindling, we actually get access to more Estus Flasks if we want them. It's not a huge deal, but it's worth mentioning. Now we get to head into the Tomb of the Giants completely blind, and that's always fun. Then we get to find the Tomb of the Giants Black Knight, and we get to parry him in complete darkness, which is actually kind of cool, I guess. Now in terms of red phantoms, I think the Paladin Leroy is probably the easiest to take care of. With such a slow weapon, you should have no issues parrying. There is a Crystal Lizard on your way to Nito. So definitely be sure to catch that, especially if you're running short on red titanite chunks. And then the pro strat here is to go into the Nido fight, kill the skeletons with the divine reinforced club, and then quit out and they'll be completely dead when you come back. Now you don't have any nonsense to worry about in the Gravelord Nido boss fight, you can just use your fire tempest. Now because I wanted to use as little pyromancy as possible, I came up with this really cool plunge attack for the undead dragon mini boss. Now for the gaping dragon, I like to do the move swap right on his nose, but for the sake of keeping it glitchless, we're just going to use fire tempest. Now it's back to the Undead Asylum, and you can actually come back here way earlier as soon as you have Fire Tempest if you need that second slab for your Lightning Club, and that's because the Stray Demon actually drops a Titanite slab. Just be sure that you don't forget to pick up the slab off the ground before leaving. At this point it's now time to head into the Painted World. Now the very first thing we're going to do is take care of the red phantom Jeremiah. Just wait until he casts any sort of pyromancy spell and backstab him. Now the undead dragon in the painted world is pretty straightforward as well. All you need to do is run up underneath him and cast a fire tempest. Crossbreed Priscilla doesn't even really feel like a boss fight to me, since she's not even aggroed when you go in there and you almost feel bad when you go to cast your Fire Tempest. Now at this point, if you didn't kill Centipede Demon, just go cut his tail off for the orange charred ring so that you don't take as much lava damage, and then just run out into the lava and grab the Chaos Flame Ember, 
This allows the blacksmith Vamos and the catacombs to ascend a plus five fire weapon into a chaos weapon. So we're going to head straight down and give him the chaos flame ember. And then we're going to have him modify our plus five fire reinforced club into a chaos reinforced club. Then we're going to use those red titanite chunks in the red titanite slab to take it all the way to plus five. And with the humanity, our chaos reinforced club plus five is now the highest damage weapon we have. <laughs> Now there's one weapon in the game that situationally can do more damage than a Chaos Reinforced Club and unfortunately we have to kill the giant blacksmith to get it. Now I know this is an atrocity. I inserted a big crying meme here in the first run. But unfortunately we need the blacksmith giant hammer. Now back to the unemotional Dark Souls destruction, we get to showcase the power of the Chaos Reinforced Club for the first time against Red Phantom Chester. Now we could take out the Great Felines with a simple R2 attack, but on the last two we're going to do the iconic two cats with one swing move. With the next boss immune to fire, it's time to upgrade the blacksmith giant hammer to plus 5 and take advantage of that lightning damage. With 180 physical and 300 lightning damage, we can use the blacksmith giant hammer to one shot the hellkite dragon with a simple R2. Parasitic Wallhugger is another pretty straightforward R2. Unfortunately on this boss, the health bar glitches out so high above it that you don't get to see your damage. The Ash Lake Hydra was another level 1 world first on my last run. You can one shot this boss with Fire Tempest at level 1 but it's extremely inconsistent. The first Prowling Demon in Sen's Fortress we're going to kill with an R2 plunge attack. The second Prowling Demon in Sen's Fortress we're going to kill with just a simple R2. Now the third Prowling Demon in Sen's Fortress has almost a thousand more health, so we have to use Fire Tempest. The fourth and final Prowling Demon in Sen's Fortress also has 2510 health, so again we're going to need to Fire Tempest. So you want to make sure you have at least 30 humanity and then join the Chaos Covenant. Also for those that are new to the game, this is what I was referencing earlier on how to skip the Centipede Demon. Now when you join this covenant, you're going to get the Great Chaos Fireball, which we're going to need later. This is basically the same as a Great Fireball, but then it leaves a lava pool on the ground to further damage the enemy for a little bit longer. Now if you want to open up the shortcut to Lost Izalith, you're going to need to turn in 30 humanity. Now in the course of doing so, you'll also be awarded Chaos Storm, which I'm not going to use at all in this run as Fire Tempest is just superior. But after turning in the 30 humanity and reaching rank 2 in the Covenant, you'll open up the shortcut to Lost Izalith so you can just head there and interact with it. 
And through the shortcut is how you can skip the centipede demon and why I said it's optional and we can move on to the next boss, the bed of chaos. Bed of Chaos is kind of a weird boss because it only has 1 HP so it doesn't matter what weapon you use when you finally get in there. What's more important is that you 360 no scope the firebomb strat for style. For those of you that didn't know, there's a free Titanite slab in a chest in Calamite's Arena. So grab that, trigger the fight, homeward bone out of there, and go grab the Crest Key. And then use this to go watch the coolest cinematic in any Dark Souls game ever. Now the actual boss fight for Calamite is really just RNG. You need to try to get underneath him and cast Fire Tempest and hope that at least three pillars hit. Now with Gwendolyn we're going to use the Dark Moon Seance Ring trick again like we did on ONS. So we're going to cast Power Within, go into Gwendolyn's fight, and make sure that when we swap rings, we still have our Great Chaos Fireball. Okay, so one-shotting Manus for the first time in history after 10 years of people trying it on Vegeta 311's one-shot challenge, that's probably the pinnacle moment of any challenge run I've ever done. With Fire Tempest doing 2,011 damage per pillar, but 2,816 damage per pillar with the 40% instability damage bonus, I just needed some sort of movement from him while two of the three pillars connected. The four kings can actually be one shot at level one two different ways, the first of which we need to go back to the painted world for, for fire surge. And this is a pyromancy that just allows you to continuously spray fire. So to set up the world's first ever level one one shot of the four kings glitchless, what we need to do is dodge the first king until the second one spawns in. Then we need to go and let them kill us on the exact location that the second king spawned in and use that bloodstain to mark that spot. This isn't mandatory, but this makes it so much easier to see where the second king's gonna spawn so that we can bait the first king there and be ready to pull this off. So what we need to do is bait the first king to where the second king spawns, and then we need to wait until the second king spawns and kill both of them with one cast of Fire Surge and hopefully take the entire health bar with just one cast. So I also killed the four kings with melee for those of you that wanted to see it done that way. But first we have to go and farm 80 more dragon scales. Now we have the covetous gold serpent ring so it should be a lot easier. Also check out this awesome farming strategy I came up with where we hit them with a great fireball and then switch an R2 with the chaos reinforced club. Since the fireball staggers them it's completely safe and you can easily R2 before they have a chance to react. I think that this will be the new golden standard for farming drakes especially at level 1. It's much faster and much easier than anything I could think of. It's still most efficient to end the run the same exact way since we only have one great fireball left and three drakes to just do a plunge attack off the ladder. Just make it a habit to spam your Estus Flask as soon as you land. Once we have our 80 scales again, we're going to go back and rejoin the Path of the Dragon Covenant. 
and then as tedious as it is, we're going to turn in all 80 of those dragon scales again in order to reach rank 3 so that we can get the full 30% boost to our AR with the dragon roar. This time you'll know when you reached 80 because you'll get a little pop-up that says cannot offer more, well done. So now we're going to go back and one-shot the four kings with melee for those that are inevitably going to be upset with the button hold on fire surge. This was really tricky to pull off. You have to hit the timing perfectly twice with the move swap. Next is the final boss in the game, Gwyn, though he's not the final boss in our challenge. And similar to Artorius, Gwyn is all about timing your cast so that he swings over your head. Be sure to go back into dragon form here for the cutscene swagger. Even though we've reached everybody's favorite sound in Dark Souls, we're not done yet on this challenge run. There's still one more boss we need to go one shot. So spawn back into the Northern Undead Asylum and then quickly make your way through. Now a lot of people don't know that while you're in dragon form, you actually do a lot of melee damage while you're unarmed with your claws. Coupled with the 400% damage special plunge critical attack, we can finish off this run with a literal soul level 1, 1 punch. Alright, so if you got questions about the run, leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And for the patrons, the full written guide will be over on Patreon as usual. And I'll post a link to the full walkthrough over there as well. Thanks again for watching guys. Stay dangerous.